I'm Russ Heaps, and welcome to this segment of Beer to Whiskey. Today I'm in Houston, Texas. I'm, I'm on a road trip of sorts, and I'm at the St. Arnold Brewery, and uh, I'm here with two of its key people. Um, sitting next to me here is Lenny Ambrose, and he's the marketing guy. He kind of help, uh, helps keep the trains running on time here. And sitting across from me, uh, I've got Aaron Inkrot, and he is the brewmaster. Uh, so, <laughs> big job. This is a big brewery, I gotta tell you. Um, so guys, tell me a little bit about the brewery. We were started back in 94 by a former Rice University student, which is a university here in town. Um, and he homebrewed in his dorm room at Rice, learned how to brew there, became an investment banker after he got out, hated doing that, was in that for seven years, and um, had always kept brewing and drinking and brewing and drinking. And so uh, Houston was, at the time, the largest city in the country without a packaging craft brewery already. So he decided Houston needs a brewery, I want to get out of investment banking and open a brewery, so this is the best place to do it. And so um, we opened up at a little kind of warehouse, as most breweries do, um, on the west side of town. <clears throat> and we were there, man, 13, 14 years, I think, in that facility. And then ever since, we've been here um, at our newer facility now for almost 10 years. So it's not quite as new anymore. Um, but we're the oldest craft brewery in Texas still. Um, which crap brewing relatively in the state is kind of a, a newer thing still in the state of Texas. Where'd the name St. Arnold come from? Uh, the Bishop of Metz in France, and he's the patron saint of brewers. So the, the basic quick miracle story of St. Arnold is that after he died, his parishioners went to where he died and were... Um, going to take them back to his home parish to bury him. Uh, on their walk back, um, they stopped at a pub. Uh, they had his body with them. Uh, the bartender only had enough beer for one mug full. He filled it, and they passed that mug, and it never went dry. And that is the miracle of St. Arnold. And he was a brewer himself, too. Any, any idea where I could buy a mug like that? <laughs> that no, no, no. <laughs> Let's uh, ship it over here. Tolkien that. had in uh, the Lord of the Rings, uh, <laughs> Gandalf had it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, Aaron, um, do you guys specialize in any particular style of beer, or are you just sort of whatever? We do a vast array of styles, um, but something that we, I feel we do rather well that other breweries in, in Texas don't uh, brew as many of our lagers. Uh, we, we have a our five o'clock pills, which we'll be trying here soon, is a kind of a take on a traditional Czech style pills. It, it's decocted. Um, we also one of our arguably our most popular beer is our summer pilsner. It's it's a Hella style lager. Um, so we kind of gravitate towards those nice, refreshing, crisp, clean beers because in Houston, gets a little warm. Gets pretty warm here. It does you know. get pretty warm <laughs> here. <laughs> I think we do a good job of brewing everyday styles well and consistent but then also we take a dip into some of the barrel aged stuff and stuff with wild yeast and, and things like that but um because i think some breweries either kind of stay like the straight and narrow path or they're almost completely known for their stuff with adjuncts or barrel aged things but um we try to do both but consistency is the the top priority, yeah. and we are not afraid to not release something if it's not right. Right. Yeah. Right. Aaron, what's your what's your background? What, how did you get? Uh, how did you work your way into brewing? My uh, my background is in music theory. I uh, worked. Well, that makes perfect <laughs> sense. <laughs> I worked in uh, recording uh, uh, recording studios for close to ten years before I got into the professional brewing world. But I um, went to school in New Jersey, worked in New York for a long time, then worked in Austin, Houston when I moved down here. And I was always into beer. I worked at a pub in college that was also a brewery, but I never brewed. I just hung out with the bartender and the brewers and got into beer that way. And what I noticed as my passion in music kind of fell, beer was kind of taking its place. And I noticed that a brewer was not only 
the musician kind of creating the liquid, but he was also the engineer because he's the one manipulating the, the equipment. Sure. And so I kind of fell in love with that aspect that I could be an artist as well as an engineer. So that's, and then I started volunteering at several breweries around town and a job came available here and I jumped at it. And, and here you are. Yeah. <laughs> wow. The, um, what, was, what was the beer that you had that was sort of your defining beer, the beer that, that made you go, boy, I, you know, I'm done with the, the, with the Coors and the, you know, this is, this craft thing is for me. Orval, it's a Belgian Trappist beer. Um, and it's a, it's the one lone Trappist brewery that only produces one beer, one style. And it's, when you drink it fresh, it has this cool hop character, it's dry. But if you let it age, it's bottle conditioned with tanamyces and it kind of evolves. It becomes something brand new. Really? And I love that beer because I kind of equate it to the best friend that you grew up with in high school. And when you get older, you see him maybe once every five years or so. And when you see him, you remember why you love him so much, but he's still changed. Yes. Which I think is great. Yeah. But that was the beer that clicked, clicked for me. Yeah. Was there, did you have a, uh, an aha beer, Lenny, or uh, you just sort my, of... Well, mine was, it's a far less uh, like a highbrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know, honestly, I think it was, it's just started for me as a curiosity to try something different. So for me, it was like honey brown, which is like a brown lager, you know, just because it wasn't what everybody else was drinking. Sure. And then stuff like Fat Tire, uh, New Belgium's beer, and um, Moose Drool, which is a, from a brewery in Montana. I love and Moose Drool. I live there for I a little while. I love Moose Drool. Yeah, so that was just, it, it wasn't like I was necessarily searching for, um, you know, I didn't take a trip to Belgium and was searching for like that beer, the single beer. It was just kind of gradually over time, just you know, you as you get a little older, maybe you want better food, better wine, better beer, whatever. And so that's kind of hap what sort of led me down that path, at least. Did you, uh, how, how long have you been here? How did you, were you a marketing guy that found this or were no, you a like beer a, guy who like Aaron, just, started marketing? Uh, other career path and then uh, switched to this. I've been here 15, uh, 15, 11 years, sorry, 11 years. Um, and uh, I was a sports broadcaster um, and decided I wanted to get out of TV for various reasons. Was doing like local news and I got married and you know, schedules are kind of difficult and stuff. So um, just emailed the brewery, Brock at the brewery and uh, said, I think you should hire me. <laughs> and <laughs> after about of like a year of going back and forth and trading emails and meeting up a couple times, he finally sort of like carved out something and so, again, 11 years, dating back to the, the old building, I guess now I would be fourth in seniority, or like tenure, I yeah. guess, with Brock being number one. So, um, been around here a while. Is, is Brock still fairly involved? Mm -hmm. I mean, do you see him? Daily. 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 He yeah. comes in and keeps an eye on yeah, things? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hands on. I think uh, he has a lot of good people doing stuff now, so it's not doing as much, obviously, but that's kind of the goal, I think, in yeah. all those situations. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Every day. Aaron, do you have um, a particular beer that you brew here that is your favorite? Is your, when, you get to, when you get to brew it, you go, man, oh man, I'm, I love this. Pub Crawl, which is, uh, we're drinking on the table. It's a it's a pale ale. You'd have to figure out which you know, they look kind of identical, yeah, but you can tell by the aroma. Let me, let me that is five o'clock pills, so that would be pub crawl. Oh okay. so it's a pale ale and we wanted to create something that smelled like an IPA but was not as bitter as an IPA. Something that you could drink. And it's lower in alcohol. So it's four point seven percent alcohol. It has a Beautiful hop aroma, nice tropical fruit nose from yeah, it does from the galaxy hops that we use as a dry hop, and again, it's 
for hop lovers who want to be drinking for a little bit longer extended time instead of drinking IPAs all day. Is, uh, do you feel that you have a special challenge in Houston because of the, the humidity and the temperature? The, or is it probably the same brewing here as it is anywhere? I would say, well, for one, ingredient-wise, um, our water, we, uh, we use reverse osmosis here, so we can just basically brew any type of style as long as we add a certain amount of minerals and salts back into it to create the flavor profile right. that we want. But our cellar is still controlled with glycol and to control fermentation temperatures, so I would say the challenges aren't necessarily um, constrained on the environment, but the consumers, most of them want nice refreshing beers and as much as I want like a coffee stout in the middle of the winter, our winter season is only a month long. Right, <laughs> right. So we're kind of constrained, I feel, at, at certain, in certain ways for to have a viable brand to do it if we want to ensure that it do, lasts. Yeah, do everything that, that you'd like to do. So I noticed we're, we're in uh, what's called the, the owner's lounge or the investor's, investors, pub, yeah. investors pub, but uh, I did notice you've got a pretty huge uh, tasting room out there it almost it's it's beer garden-esque yeah um, do you guys pack that in pretty well yeah we do pretty well out there and then we serve food as well and then we're also uh, building a facility next door another public facility and then our is that what the construction is yeah. that's going on out uh -huh. there okay uh, so that'll be a full-time restaurant beer garden and then the room here and then um, the beer hall will transition more into just rentals and then when we have our own private events and public events that we want to do we can do that as well um, but St. Arnold really I'm, n I'm not exaggerating when I say this and it was before I started working here really created the beer culture in Houston and sort of the format um, in Texas basically of how people visit breweries uh, because the laws were not in our favor for years and years and years so you kind of had to create a way to allow the public to come in and so San Arnold kind of pioneered that and then you see as breweries open up over time that everybody just kind of did that because it yeah. was already it was um, the best path so you guys do tours and all those sorts of yeah, things all right standard yeah. stuff okay. have a kitchen as well here that serves the beer hall yeah yeah so you can you can get food in there yep absolutely well let's talk beer here you sure. know enough enough of the the <laughs> uh, the foreplay let's talk beer um, so we we talked a little bit about this it's pub crawl and it's and it's paleo with uh, that's dry hopped with uh, Australian galaxy hops um, again to kind of give a nice tropical fruit nose but still uh, low in alcohol so you can Enjoy several without feeling bad about it. So it's a session beer. Yeah. And, and we're, we are constantly sort of adding beers in that style. I feel like that's become a focus. I also think brewers over time want to drink yeah. these sorts of beers more than, you know, a 9% double IPA. Maybe you have one of those or something. Yeah. Just regularly sort of drinking this stuff. Yeah. Pub crawl and then five o'clock pills are the the main two beers that I consume on on a regular basis. Is that right? Yeah, um, we try every single beer out of the horse's mouth right <laughs> there. Before we, I mean, we we try every single batch before it gets packaged. But as a brewer, these these two beers are uh, I enjoy the most. Um, for five o'clock pills, it's I mentioned earlier that it's uh, a take on a Czech style pills. Uh, we we decoct it, which means we boil a certain percentage of the mash. That helps give it a, a nice slight caramelization, but also retain a nice malt biscuity flavor. And then it's 100% hopped with uh, the Saz hop. Um, it's also dry hopped with that to kind of give a nice spice and floral note. Yeah, it's, this is a tasty, this is a tasty beer. You think, you know, you think Pilsner a lot and it's, uh, and it's sort of, you don't think about it having much of a personality. And uh, this certainly does. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a fun beer to it's a hard beer to make, but it's 
It takes a long time. It takes a long time. That's what I understand, that it's yeah. a little trickier. To yeah, the decoction adds about an hour and a half to the whole process itself. And then as a logger, it uh, ferments for, it's in the tank for about six weeks at least, and then, then it finally gets packaged. So it's, you see it go into a tank and you just kind of wait until it's ready. Okay, now this is the one that I'm excited about. So we have a, uh, a brand known as the Bishop's Barrel brand. Um, it's where we age beer in wood barrels. And we've, as uh, since December of 2017, we've released 19 uh, different types of barrel aged beers. We've aged an assortment of barrels, uh, like the, the standard bourbon that's pretty popular. We've also aged in rye whiskey, uh, Chardonnay barrels, uh, red wine barrels, Tequila, gin, cognac. I mean, we've we've played with. You've variety. tried them all. We've tried quite a few, um, and this one in particular is Bishop Barrel Number no. Fourteen. It's a, a Russian Imperial Stout base. Um, then we age it in <coughs> bourbon barrels for close to a year. After the aging, we rack out of the barrel, go back into a stainless tank, and we add coffee, um, so ground beans, and kind of do our own cold brew of the, of the the coffee and beer itself. And during about a 48 hour time period we taste taste the beer out of the tank every every few hours just to tough see job how, yeah <laughs> see how the coffee character <laughs> takes on and once it gets to a level that we like uh, we run it through a centrifuge to separate the beer from the coffee beans and, and then we package what's the uh, what's the alcohol content uh, this one in particular uh, I don't it's around 13 percent alcohol Wow. Between 12 and 13. I don't remember right off the top of my head. That's kind of flirting with the barley wine uh, yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, Russian Imperial Stouts can hover within that same range as well. I really like that, though. That is... It's good. I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a brown porter stout okay. drinker. That's what I really like. And, uh, and I think what's great about... I mean, bourbon barrel stout is by far the most common commonly aged beer in a barrel. And the reason why I think that is is because stouts work really well with bourbon. Right, <laughs> right. It's, uh, I think, and the coffee adds a nice other layer of complexity. So it's, yeah, it's a... It's I, a I, if I ever ran across the first person who thought about aging beer in bourbon barrels, I would shake his hand. Because <laughs> it's a brilliant idea, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it's good beer. <laughs> yeah. It's good breakfast beer. <laughs> yeah. It's got coffee in it. Yep, exactly. <laughs> well, guys, um, I appreciate you taking the time and, and uh, talking to us a little bit about the, the brewery and the beer. And it's, it's been fun and it's been educational. Yeah, sure. And, uh, and with that. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Why not? Why not, Russ? See you next time.